nearly had it then. Got these five minute videos are doing my head in. Um, yeah, so I'm really stressing the fact that the gradient of the gradient is zero. That, that this part here is really, really important. That they're zero. Now this allows us to find the point of inflection there. So let's have a quick look. So we've got something else here that it's talking about. There's a lot of a theory with this bit. So x to the 4 looks like a shallowed out x squared there. So then it says, oh, that's good. My pack is different to the pack you've got. Great. <sighs> right, so, so y is x to the 4, dy by dx is 4x cubed, d2y by dx squared is 12x squared. Now, for the stationary point, in this, dy by dx is 0, and that would happen when 4x cubed is 0, which is x is 0 because it is a stationary point, but also the point of inflection is when d2y by dx squared is 0. So that means that 12x squared is 0, x is 0. So what I've got there, it looks like it's a, a point of inflection, but it isn't. So this here, We've got to be careful. It looks like a point of inflection. But I've not changed from convex to concave, have I? It's convex on both sides. It looks like a point of inflection, but it's convex on both sides. So we need to be really, really careful. Convex on both sides. There. Mm. Hang on. Sorry, everyone. That example at the bottom of my your page isn't in my pack, in my completed one. So we just had to go and do the question quickly. So if you graph it, it looks like that. I've got a stationary point, and I've kind of got a change. My, my picture isn't very good here, but it, it, it's not good at all, actually. So I want to show, like, a change from convex to concave. It's more like that. Oh, it's hard to do. It's hard to do. It's like that, actually. Um, so if I do dy by dx, that's 4x cubed plus 4. So for my stationary point... For the 4x cubed plus 4 is 0, that will give me x is minus 1, which is over here, minus 1. But if I differentiate it again, that's a 12x squared, that will definitely give me a point of inflection at x is 0, but if I set that equal to 0. So there's a point of inflection there, so you can kind of see it's going up and then it comes out. So my dodgy picture doesn't, does it no justice whatsoever. But what I'm saying is there's a point of inflection now. Whew. So what it's trying to push is the fact that, um, that it says here that all points of inflection have a property that the second differential is zero. But <laughs> I can get d2y by dx squared is zero out for a value and it's not a point of inflection. So like it's kind of saying, if you look back on that one here, this one wasn't a point of inflection, even though I got a value out that made me think I had a point of inflection. So that was kind of wrong. Now. So we've got to be careful with it. Okay. So what you want to do, find where you think a point of inflection is, and then check on the other side and see if there's a change. I'm just going to stop the vid there and do another video.